Hi, welcome to Games Medusa. My name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Today I want to teach you and give you some tips on how to play Seven Wonders Second Edition, designed by Antoine Boza and published by Repo Production. It is one of my favorite gateway games, a real classic in my house. What I enjoy the most about Seven Wonders is how beginners can learn it very quickly but yet experienced players can get excited about it too. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button, it helps a lot. In Seven Wonders, you play a city-state competing to become the most powerful civilization. You compete against other players by collecting cards which represent the resources, structures and wonders you can add to your civilization. As your civilization grows through three ages, your buildings combine and become increasingly more rewarding and you develop your city's military, science, commerce, special abilities and earn gold. All these score points and at the end of age 3, the player with the most points wins the game. To set up the game, start by sorting out the cards in three decks, one for each age. You will be removing cards in each deck depending on the number of players. Seven Wonders is a 3-7 to seven player game. Today I will show you how to set up for a 4 player game. Only keep the cards marked 3 plus and 4 plus as shown at the bottom of the cards here. Put the 5 plus, 6 plus and 7 plus cards back in the box. You should have 28 cards left in the age 1 and age 2 decks. For the third age, you also need to set aside the 10 purple cards. These are guild cards. Randomly draw 2 more than the number of players. So here we take 6. Keep them secret and add them to the other 22 age 3 cards. Place H2 and H3 face down on the table, shuffle each deck and distribute the entire H1 deck. Each player should now have 7 cards. There are 7 types of cards in 7 Wonders and they all have pretty much the same design. First off, on the top is the name of the building. It is important because you cannot have the same building twice in your city. Then the colour of the card indicates what type of card it is. Brown and grey are resources and blue, yellow, green and red cards are structures. On the top of each card you can see what the card does. Brown cards have raw materials like wood, clay or, or stone. If the card shows two goods separated by a slash, each turn you decide which good to pick. In H2 the brown cards have two icons, so here you can pick both goods at the same time. The grey cards are manufactured goods like papyrus, loom or glass. Blue cards are public buildings and give points at the end of the game. Yellow cards are commercial structures which usually provide coins or goods. This one for instance gives 5 coins, while this one lets you buy a raw material cheaper from your left neighbour. Green cards are science buildings, they have one of three symbols. The more symbols you have, the more points you score at the end of the game. Finally, red cards are for the military and allow you to battle neighbouring players. In H3, we also have the purple guild cards. I'll explain those later. On the left is the cost of the card. If it's empty, the card is free. Otherwise, you need to produce that good or pay its cost. Also, some buildings will give you free access to buildings in the next age. That's shown by this symbol in the top right corner here. Buildings you can get from buildings from earlier ages also have this symbol on the left near the resources required. These can be very powerful. To see which buildings give access to more buildings, check this chart here. And here you can see how many of each card is in the deck. Then give each player three gold and select a wonder randomly. All players agree whether they're going to play the day side or the night side. All wonders have three stages on their day side. Most wonders also have three stages on the night side, except Giza, which has four stages and Babylon and Rogers only have two. The stages are not linked to the ages. You can build as many stages as you want in any age. Also, each turn the wonder produces one of the raw materials or one of the manufactured goods shown in the corner here. Keep the military tokens and the coins close by for easy access. Now we can start playing. All three ages play the same way and all players play at the same time. Players will pick one card from their hand and place it face down on their wonder. Once all players have selected their card, they can take one of three actions to use with that card. They can keep it as a building in their city, they can sell it and discard it, or they can use it to build one of the stages of their wonder. If you decide to keep the card as a building, you have to pay its cost. If the card is free, place the card face up in front of you. 
If the card requires a good and you produce it, then you can also place the card in your city. If you do not produce the resource, check if your neighbour, that is the player directly on your left or directly on your right, produces that good. These must come from brown or grey backgrounds, including the wonder. They cannot come from a yellow card or the stage of a wonder or a card that's just been played. You pay your neighbours two gold for each resource you need. If you need to pay gold for the card, then you pay the bank directly. You can buy from both your neighbours as long as they produce enough. If both your neighbours produce the same good, you pick the one you want to pay. You can never buy from someone across the table. You normally pay two gold for each resource you need, but some of your buildings, like trading posts or marketplace, let you buy materials or goods for only one gold. The arrows show which neighbour offers that discount. Here the East trading post offers a discount on these four goods produced by the player on your right. As always, you will need to pay the gold before you can place the card in your city. But remember the coins earned can only be used in the following turns. You cannot use the money you've just received in payment to buy the card that you're building this turn. Also, you can never refuse to sell a resource. It's important to understand that brown and gray buildings represent production, not the resource itself. So for instance, you can sell to another player or even two neighbors and still use that production for yourself this turn. Keep the brown and gray cards together under the wonder like this, other cards of the same type are kept together like this, making sure to show both the type of card and its name visible. These cards represent buildings that will be available until the end of the game. Now, if there's no card that you want or that you can pay for, or if you need the money, you can choose to sell the card. Discard it to sell it for three coins. Discarded cards go face down in a pile, but players can check the discard at any time. Now, the third option is to use the card to build the stage of your wonder. Here you put the card face down under the leftmost empty stage of your wonder. To do so, don't pay the cost of the card. For example, here you need to produce or buy two ore for the first stage, then one glass and one papyrus for the second stage, and three stone for the third stage. Most wonders bonuses are quite straightforward, like gaining coins, producing resources, gaining victory points, science or military strength. Some wonders are a bit more complicated than others. For instance, Halicarnassus lets you pick any card from the discard pile and build it for free. This stage of Olympia means that if the colour of the card you're constructing isn't yet present in your city, you construct this card for free. On its night side, it's up to two cards for free. Here the very first card you choose to construct at the start of an age, and here the sixth card in any age is also free to build. And this one in Babylon lets you keep the last two cards of the age, so you don't discard the seventh. Finally, remember that you must build stages in order from left to right, and each stage can only be built once. Once you have played your card, you will pass the rest of your hand to your neighbour. In age 1 and 3, pass the cards clockwise, and in age 2, pass counterclockwise, as shown here. Once players have played their sixth card in an age, they discard the last one. Now, it's time to resolve all the military conflicts with their neighbours. For this, each player compares its military strength to both its neighbours. One by one, compare how many shields you have compared to your neighbour. The player with the most gains a victory token plus one in age one, plus three in age two, and plus five in age three. The losing player always receives a minus one defeat token. At the end of this age one, all players have one shield, so nothing happens. So let's see what happens at the end of age two. Here it looks like nothing happens, but in fact, with these two extra, Rodos wins. I take a minus one and Rodos a plus three. Rodos also wins against Ephesos. Ephesos also loses against Babylon. And Babylon wins against Halicarnassos. Keep these tokens with you until the end of the game. Now it's time to start the next age. Take the new deck and distribute seven cards to each player. We've seen H2 cards are slightly more powerful than H1, but pretty much the same. However, H3 is totally different. There's no more resources, but we have guilds. At the end of the game, your guilds let you score for some of your neighbor's buildings. These for yellow buildings of both your neighbors. One point for both your and your neighbor's completed wonder stages. This one gives you an extra science symbol. And this one gives you seven victory points for completing your wonder. And finally, this one scores one point for each of your brown, gray or purple cards. As soon as players have discarded the last card in age three, 
The game ends immediately and it's time to count the points. We'll use this notepad for it. Start with a wonder, so 10 points here. Then one point for every three coins, so two points. Then the military, you add the victory and defeat tokens, so 16 points here. Then add all the blue cards, three points. Then yellow cards. Here one point for each brown card. The wonder doesn't count, so it's one point. Then score the science symbols. There are two ways to score with them. The first way is with each set of three different symbols. Score seven points for each group of three different symbols. The second way is with each set of identical symbols. The more you have, the more you score. Here one point for one symbol, four points for two symbols, nine points for three, and if we had four, it would be 16 points. So for instance here, you can score seven plus one plus four plus nine, 21 points. He does not have any guild, so that's a total of 53 points. The player with the most points wins the game. In case of a tie, it will be the player with the most gold. And if they still tie, then they should play again. Now, my tips to win at Seven Wonders are, wonders can be hard to build, so be flexible and adapt your strategy to the wonder that you have. The second edition has new cards for military and economic buildings, also a cheaper military guild, so it has become easier to win through military might. If you use a card an opponent needs to build one of the stages of your wonder, then it will stop them from using it, even from the discard pile. Keep an eye out for what your neighbors produce to see if you're going to be able to finish all the stages of your wonder. Vice versa, you can gain a lot of extra gold if you produce what your neighbors need. You can score a lot of points through science, but it takes a lot of commitment. You need to start early, uh, take advantage of the free buildings. If you have the wonder uh, and the guild bonuses, that helps a lot as well. So that's how you play Seven Wonders. It's a great gateway game. It's fun, it's fast, and I'm sure as soon as you're done with your first game, you'll want to play another one. While it looks simple, the more you play it, you realize there's a lot of different ways to win. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. If there is a game you'd like me to teach, leave it in the comments. I'll definitely check it out. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.